please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun. And remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the history of bad ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 543. I'm Jason. I'm uh, Jeff. I'm Brian. Hey! The, oh, wait, hold on. I gotta update Blake's numbers here. Let me yeah. get get Blake's numbers here. He's now 7 for 18. Is that including the last three that this week? 7 for 19. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was say. That's, uh, yeah. You know, hey, you know what? He was doing really good, Brian. And then he decided that, well, you know, my batting average is too high. Uh, I need to uh, lower it a little bit. So, uh, welcome, everybody. Um, before welcome. we get started here, Jim was nice enough to bring us more Sour Patch Oreos, correct? He sent them over. And if you have not gotten Sour Patch Oreos, you need to. A limited time. They have not sponsored us yet. But these things are magnificent. So, Brian, I mean, you just had another one, didn't you? I actually have not yet. Oh, okay. I thought you did. I'm sorry. I have not. There you go, Jeff. There's I'm one for you. To. They need to sell these in bulk? Yes. These are a little warm. Were these in your car? They were in my car. Okay. Could be. The cream's a little melty. That makes it even better. Mm, not sure about that. I'm 100% sure about that. Um, I don't think I noticed it last time that they actually have like the red and green on the outside, the Sour Patch on the cookie itself. Yeah, they're baked into the cookie and into the cream. I think that that brings a big flavor change to it. I think that helps. It it really does. So, And I think Jim said this was in his top five? Yeah. For a favorite Oreo? It's probably in mine now. Really? Yeah. This they're, they're just so good. This and the chocolate... Peanut butter pie. Peanut butter, peanut butter. Th- th- this is fighting for number Really? One. See, I'm going chocolate peanut butter pie See, I, still. I, I, I'm holding back because recency bias and all that. I don't want to correct throw it there. But, yeah, this is very well could be yes. my favorite Oreo cookie. Brian, the good news? No peeps for you this week. Oh, all right. Jesus is finally over. <laughs> we're finally done with Jesus. I don't think we're done with Jesus yet. I don't think yet. We're done with this holiday until December. We think. We think. Uh, we better the, be. Until the sequel comes back. Um, well, I mean, like, there, there's the, uh, what, the Feast of the... Uh, Immaculate? No, uh, well, the, oh. the Annunciation. Okay. So we got to celebrate that. And we, we, uh, we have to. We have to. Isn't there like a epiphany or something like that? Uh, epi- Feast uh, of the Epiphany? That's in January. Oh, okay. Um, I can't remember the the Ascension. That, okay, <laughs> okay, the Ascension. You know. Okay, isn't that like a month after Easter? Oh, I thought it was longer, but oh, maybe it if is it's a month. Then we might then I might have missed it and didn't celebrate it. Well, Every, well, we had peeps last week, so that could be our celebration. That could be that. our ascension. Yeah, I like that. Um, um welcome everybody to <laughs> Catholic talk. To, to figuring out Jesus's holidays. Yes. Yes. Jesus talk. I mean, pretty much every week is a Jesus holiday. Yeah. Hey, people like it when we talk uh, religion on here. Well, at least when we put it in the title. 
Um, we don't really get feedback after that. <laughs> Usually they go, stop it. Yeah, it's it's because after they start listening, they they realize that we're making fun of them. We're not making fun of. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I am. Well, yes, yes, you are. I don't know about anybody else, but what, yes, uh, it is me making fun. Um, I do want to let everybody know uh, that um, Damn Cockney has been cut, has been canceled uh, by CBS. Uh, a lot, uh, but Kafka is still around for Michael Richards for the fall shows. So just want to let you know, uh, CBS had a rough um, uh, Monday night. Grandma Needs a Mattress and Damn Cockney have both been canceled. That was the 9, 930 block. I kind of forgot all about Damn Cockney. Uh, yeah, um, it was with Dean Winters. So uh, just let you guys know. So it was a rough day, rough day. Uh, Wibbly Wobbly is still going on strong, though. So that's good. Oh, that's, that, good. that's like top five show, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. so the, the season finale should be airing soon. It should be. It should be. Um, and you then, know, you know, we're going to have to start working on this fall's uh, lineup soon. Well, there's not many shows that have been canceled. Grandma Needs a Mattress, Damn Cockney, F.U. Billy McFarland, and um, Campbellism is okay with Army Hammer. Well, yeah. That's I mean, been replaced by Bennett by now, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was replaced with looking at a microwave. Um, so, the, um, you know, Fox really got into that. Look at a microwave did not get picked up by CBS, so Fox picked it up. So, uh, literally, is a microwave just turning. Well, um, yeah, but you get to watch cool things expand yeah. in the microwave. Is that going to go up against Fox News? <laughs> Down the hall. Uh, speaking of things blowing up in the microwave or just cooking in the microwave, I did watch... I got um, hooked on Shawshanked into watching some Dave Letterman dropping stuff off a building, <laughs> it was like from the 1980s, early 90s. Um, I don't even know why. It, uh, it was, I think it was on that two TVs to Paradise. He had something. He had uh, Dave working Taco Bell, uh, which was hilarious. If you can't haven't seen it, go back and see it. And then he worked at uh, McDonald's. Uh, but then it went into Dave dropping things off the building, and I was like, I remember watching this when I was a kid because my brothers used to watch that. Uh, I remember when I was thinking this was the height of entertainment. It probably was. It probably is still. Have you seen TV lately? Uh, yeah, we put a whole fall schedule <laughs> out. I mean, we have Wibbly Wobbly. That's true. Is it better than Wibbly Wobbly? Um. Yeah. So there. Do you, you go. think that that's where Kramer got the idea for dropping the balloon off the building in the Kramerica? Kramerica. <laughs> the oil. Just one day thing. we'll get the chicken. <laughs> uh, that could have been. That could have been. That is one of my favorite uh, episodes when he gets when the, the intern. intern. <laughs> yeah. War. What is it good for? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. That's a song. Where do you think he got it from? <laughs> Uh, let's see here. October 18th through the 20th this year. Uh, come to Sharonville for the Cincinnati Comic Expo. Uh, we'll be uh, there. Uh, old man Brad is going to be there as well. Uh, he'll be doing uh, wonderful uh, what you call it, uh, panels with me and Jim. Um, I'm Brad. There he is. Uh, Chuck Norris is going to be there. Mira Sorvino. Uh, Sad news that Chuck Norris is... Uh what CW show got canceled today? Chuck Norris had a CW show? Oh, I mean, it was the reboot. Oh, the uh, Walker. Walker. They really? finally officially canceled it. So now they have no original programming on CW. Um, The fall, they... They can come to us. We can find something for them. <laughs> I guarantee uh, Dr. Dana would love to have Jared Padalecki... At the show? Or uh, in our you know, lineup. <laughs> anywhere what? near she could be around him. Andrew. We need we need Jared. So uh, I know they have like their own supernatural con. Okay, that they go places like they're in um, Nashville in December. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're in Columbus in June, mm-hmm. but uh, Jared isn't going to be there. Oh. but he's going to be at the one in Nashville. The, okay, like the one in Nashville is Jared. Jensen, mm-hmm. um, Misha, Misha Collins. Mm-hmm. It's like all of the the main stars main. Are, in, are in that one. So, has it, she seen all the whole all the series? Yeah. Okay. Because there's like 16 seasons. Yeah. Which is pretty damn impressive. Yeah. Um, I mean, and you really don't hear people bitch 
like, oh, it really went downhill. Like, people say, oh, it wasn't as good, but obviously it's 16 seasons. Yeah, and I mean... But there was, there's not a lot of, like, anger in the social media world, which is shocking, towards it. I mean, if there is, then it's a very quiet group of people who are upset that just yes. aren't making as much noise. Uh, CW does have two shows, I believe, original shows in the fall. All-American... And oh, yeah. there's another two. There might be two new ones, uh, but everything else is WWE NXT. Uh, I think they still have another season of um, uh, Whose Line Is It Anyways? Because during COVID and right after COVID, they taped like enough shows to last like four seasons. Wow. Um, so, yeah, so that still has another season. Um, but, yeah, CW is basically. It's very weird. Like, they said that they're going more into live sports. I guess uh, they got NASCAR or, like, a form of NASCAR um, that I don't know. Or, like, maybe the lesser races in the NASCAR series. I'm not sure. But they got NASCAR. They got Live Golf or whatever it is. Um, and then they got WWE and uh, NXT. They said that uh, Raw and SmackDown was too much for them, too expensive. I'd imagine. Yeah. So I'll tell you what, they should sign TNA. I would love for them to get TNA. That would be amazing. You went to that this week. Yeah, Jim, myself, and Dr. Dana went to uh, night two of mm-hmm. the uh, two-night event down in uh, Newport. I saw you saw a championship change hands? We did. What? We saw the uh, digital the digital media mm-hmm. championship changed hands. Yes. Spoilers. Um, saw Jordan Grace defend her title. Who'd she pl- face? Couldn't tell you. Okay. <laughs> uh, another female wrestler. Uh, she's amazing. She uh, probably... Wait, another female wrestler? Yes, yes. <laughs> she she's probably will not be in TNA very long. Yeah. Only, the only thing is is that her husband's also there. So. Gresham is there, and I think that could be a he's factor. A, he's a scary person. He is a... The, uh, the octopus. Everybody gives him hell because he's so small, like short, but he is a he's bundle a hell of muscle. Of a yeah. yeah, he's a hell of a wrestler. He is. But he's very scary. Yeah. His mask is very scary. Is it the octopus with all the tentacles yep. coming out? Oh, yeah. yeah that one's yep, pretty yep. good. Um, yeah. You saw Joe Hendry. We we did see Joe Hendry. Uh, I believe in Joe Hendry. Even uh, quickly got to meet him. How was he? Oh, he's amazing. He um, really is. He, he's a great guy. If they don't strap great a wrestler. rocket to him soon. Yeah. Uh, I know he's feuding with Muse. Uh, Moose. Muse. <laughs> Muse. Musinex? M- yes, Muse. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he hates allergies. That's it. Tis the season, my friend. <laughs> Stupid phlegm. Is he, uh, did he face the green uh, booger thing from Mucinex next commercial? <laughs> yeah. It, it, it like slimed its way to the ring. Yeah, yeah to the ring. Uh, if you haven't seen Joe Hendry, even if you're just like in passing a wrestling fan, it's funny. His, he does a lot of, he's like the weird Al, weird Al Yankovic of wrestling theme songs. Uh, he did a really good one about Scotty Too Hotty. But he can wrestle. Yeah, um, he is a very good wrestler. I would love to see him in WWE one day. Um, I, I think TNA would be smart to give him a pretty serious uh, championship. That would be great. Um, but, yeah, he. I think if they don't, I think he's WWE bound. He, I think especially with Triple H, he's just yeah. fantastic. Uh, yeah, he wrestled one of the guys that's uh, – the guy he's it, the guy that tags with Brian Myers. Uh, Matt Cardona? No. He Slater, the other guy. No, okay. Neither of them. Neither of them. <laughs> none of those people. None of the people that Brian Myers is with currently. The guy who he's with currently. Okay. Like none of like uh, Matt Cardona or neither. Neither of them were there. So. Okay. I think Cardona is actually injured. Yeah. Um, he separated. Short. Did you for- see the uh, Nemeth twins? Yeah, multiple times. Ah. Uh, so they came out. Former Dolph Ziggler. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so funny thing uh, about that match. So uh, earlier in the in the show, uh, Nick and Ryan came out uh, as a ring help for Joe Hendry because mm-hmm. they were like Brian Myers and another whoever. His group, else. yeah. They were all out there. So like right before the match, Nick and Ryan came out as help. Eddie you know. Edwards. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's, that's right. Him. Yep. Yep. There we go. Sorry. Right. Um, the ski jumper? Yes. Yes. Cool. Eddie the Eagle. Yeah. yeah. Eddie the Eagle. He found a um, new life as a wrestler yeah, at 75. Set, <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, never give up. That's never. right. Never give up your dreams. He he, he believes like Joe. He Henry. does. <laughs> Uh, so they came out, you know, and you know that was uh, that was a lot of fun. And then uh, they wrestled uh, later in the evening. Uh, they wrestled uh, the guys from that are part of the Bullet Club. Um, oh, Chris in, Bay. Yeah, Chris Bay, and yeah, I got gotcha. you. The other guy. Yeah. Um, so like they, you know, they start the match, and it's it's kind of quiet in the arena, and uh, like right before. Uh, Ryan locks up with the other guy. There's probably an eight year old kid in the like that's in the seats. There were probably generously like 300 people there. Yeah, I mean it wasn't a big thing, mm-hmm. but he like very quiet and he goes, "Hey, that's Dolph Ziggler." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and like everyone just starts laughing. Like Nick turned and kind of like winked at him. And, <laughs> and, um, so yeah, but. Uh, that was a fun match. They're uh, that's the first time. So they're obviously they're brothers. Mm-hmm. First time in both of their wrestling careers that they've actually wrestled in a tag team together. That's pretty cool. Um, I'll be honest. I think um, Nick Nem- Nemeth 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 going there is probably the best thing he could have done. Yeah, since leaving WWE because. If he went to AEW, he would have been lost in the crowd because they're really struggling. I, I even have trouble watching AEW now. I mean, to be fair, if he would have went to AEW, it would have just been him following all of the other yeah. WWE guys like Christian and Edge and mm-hmm. Brian, you know, Daniel Bryan and like all those guys. Like, and I, I don't know. I I don't know exactly what it is that happened to AEW, but it's bad. Yeah, Young it wasn't bu- supposed to be. Let's just rehash the stuff that's too old for WWE. It's not. It's a problem too because the elite has taken over, like Young Bucks and those guys. Yeah. And it's funny. Like I look at the ratings just out of curiosity because I like numbers and stats. And every time the Young Bucks get on the screen, they drop forty to fifty thousand viewers. Wow. And like they break up the segment, you know how they do quarters and that. Yeah. Every time they show. Them on, they drop forty to fifty thousand. It's every single time. It's consistently, and I'm like, you know what it sounds like to me? There's a group of people about forty to fifty thousand <laughs> strong that are doing it on purpose. I'm fine with that because yeah. they're horrible. And I'm like, read the tea leaves, there, man. Like, yeah, stop yeah, it. But I mean, they've kind of sank all their. Oh, they did. You know that AW has kind of sank all their teeth into. To they push their chips in with the elite. Yeah, and that's um, the issue. And, but I mean. TNA is fun to watch. Um, the problem is I can't find it. Yeah, well, uh, it's can, not on any channels I have. Yeah, you can like you can watch the episodes because like over the weekend I think they filmed like they filmed all of the mm. things. So like I think they filmed at least two, if not more, mm-hmm. like weeks episodes. worth of things. Um, but I know you can watch them on YouTube. Okay. Um, like when they like the day that they come out, you can okay. stream them on YouTube. I'll take a look at that because I haven't um, seen that. I, like I said, it's tough because I would love to watch them. It's just yeah. it, they don't make it easy. No, but I mean, to be fair, they like I said, they don't they don't have a, a deal like any of the other ones where they can you know film live and travel like that. They have to. F- and know, the do- owners own AEXS, I think it is a channel, whatever yeah. channel they're on. They own that channel and they are like we need content, right? So they just throw it on there. Yeah. Um. Because even um. What is it? Uh, not, it? Roku has it, too. But I think it's Tubi. Um, they have a TNA channel, too. Nice. So it's the, it's the old school ones, but it's at least on there. So, um, But, yeah, uh, I, it, was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Like, Good. Myself and Jim and Erica, all, we had a blast. Dr. Dana had fun? She, yeah, we all had a great time. Uh, Jim and I got numerous chants started yeah. throughout the night. <laughs> um, That's the best is when that happens. Yeah. So, uh, so my, my kids hear me singing, I believe in Joe Hendry throughout the house a couple times a week. I do love it. I love that song. And, um, so I was in charge of the music for my son's baseball game, my oldest son's baseball game. And, uh, it's good. It's a pretty nice sound system. It's a pretty nice park that he plays his home games at. And, uh, before the game started, I played the, I believe in Joe Hendry song. And I just, I could know, I noticed. <laughs> and I was like, did you hear me play? He's like. Yeah, Dad. No one gets it. Did anybody <laughs> wave their arms from side no. to side? Oh. I was uh, excited. I was excited up in the cra- in the announcer's booth, but no, nobody else was as excited for me. Yeah. 
uh yeah no like it was great um the uh sammy callahan was the like main event because mm-hmm. um, he came back yeah uh love that guy don't know much about him but he's a crazy motherfucker love that guy uh he um, used to ta- tag with uh, john moxley okay so uh he's and- got a great uh entrance song mm-hmm. it's death machine and then like is very metal and it's amazing uh and he's a super nice guy too yeah um he has no issue putting over people at all yeah. uh which is really nice to see uh when tna had a uh tessa uh, blanchard as the women as the men's heavy well the world heavyweight champion they didn't distinguish um he put her over without yeah. issue um and it was um, really nice to see i think brian cage actually even put her over too to win the belt yeah um so yeah um yeah got to got to kind of hang out afterwards got to meet some some of the the talent okay um after their meet and greets they had a few meet and greets but uh ryan ryan uh yeah he had his own um free meet and greet um that he didn't know that he had but (laughs) he was out in the concourse talking to the three of us and probably 30 different people were just kind of like lined up behind us like Waiting. Standing there staring at him. <laughs> so he was like, ah, all right. And he, I mean, but to his credit, he talked to every single one of them, signed whatever they needed Did to. Did you get him on the podcast? Uh, I'm working on it. Okay. Um, I'm working on it. Okay. But uh, got to meet Nick. Got we can to even meet, go to um, Dana's. Well, I mean, he won't be there. He'll be in <laughs> yeah. California yeah. where he lives. Oh, that's right. That's yeah, right. he lives in L.A. Uh, got to meet uh Ash by Elegance or whatever. Oh yeah, formerly Dana Brooke. Yep, um, could not have been a nicer person. I um, do like those smaller wrestling shows just because they do. You really do get to see yeah. them come so, together a little bit. Got a got a picture with her. Nice. Um, got some pictures with Ryan. So yeah, it Good. was a, it was a all around fun event. Good. Um, and it was free. You can't get wrong with that. Uh, Jim, Not- Jim got a ticket from somebody as he was walking in. They're like, hey, do you need a ticket? And he was like, yeah. And they're like, here. <laughs> Uh, I didn't know if Ryan had put us on the guest list or not, and yeah. I asked, and she was like, oh, I don't see it. How many tickets? And I was like, oh, it would have been like two. And she's like, yeah, yeah, here you go. <laughs> so <laughs> we're like, all right, cool. <laughs> I mean, going. have no problem, you know, paying the sure. 12 bucks or whatever it was. Yeah. But, I mean, I I mean, genuinely, it was just asking because he has done that. Yeah. And, you know. Uh, has had his brother do that for us. Did you go online after the show and then just start trashing him because that's what social media does? Um, I, the only thing that I did do, mm-hmm. um, I, I did go uh, onto Twitter, mm-hmm. and I just wanted everyone to be aware that um, I was going to be starting a new thread on Reddit about Ryan. Okay. Um, Reddit really hates him. Okay. Um, Why? That's a great question. Um, so he kind of was one of the driving forces behind all of the NXT build a month stuff yeah. that happened. Oh. Um he, I got gotcha. He was one of the main people involved in that. Okay. Um and Reddit really hated him for that. Um time out, time out. Internet hates people? Uh they do. Yeah. More Jeff, than have you mo- ever heard that? more than you'd imagine. No, I thought the internet was a place of love and affection. Better question. How do you get to Reddit? Because I still don't know it. <laughs> uh, you just type in uh, reddit.com. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. And then you'll... you'll... I don't like the subcategories. <laughs> well, I mean, you have to... Yeah. You have to I mean, I can get to Reddit. I mean, then, once, you're, <laughs> once you're there, you just have to type what you're looking for, and like then it. it'll pull it up. I it, like it. It's, it gives you a whole bunch of different threads, and none of them are what I'm looking for no. half the time. Um. Well, I mean, you know... It, you know, it's not free, though. Since I come at Expo, you need to get your tickets. It is not. It is not. Brian, you're going to be there. I will be there, Jason. I am planning on showing up. I plan on being there. I plan on being there. Um, we did have a social media poll of the week. You can find us at Bad Ideas Podcast. And on Facebook at The History of Bad Ideas. Please follow us. Give us some likes. Give us some reviews. What is your favorite park at Walt Disney World? We do this every couple of years just to see what people think. We have Animal Kingdom, Magic Kingdom, Epcot, and Hollywood Studios. Last place, Animal Kingdom, 5%. Good choice. It's kind of lackluster. Uh, 16% Epcot. That's your favorite. That's what I voted for. 
and then winning 50% to 27% Magic Kingdom over Hollywood Studios. I would flip those two. I like Hollywood Studios better. Um, we had several uh, other people put in their votes on this poll. I don't believe that. Um, we had a vote for Coney Island. Ugh. We had a uh, vote for Harry Potter World. Ugh. I still don't think any of them are at Walt Disney World. We had a vote for Cedar Point. Oh, that's there. Um, that's a new land. Uh, we had a vote uh, for uh, the Rock and Roller Coaster. That's uh, actually in Hollywood Studios. Oh, okay. And they're reopening on July 27th. Uh, and then we had a vote for Universal. Oh, I don't think that's there. It's in Orlando. It is in Orlando. It is in Orlando. Uh, the street. And, and yes. Then, and then we had someone ask, uh, was park and ride not an option? No. No, it was not. Okay. Scooby-Doo Lot 7. Um, yeah. A lot no. of, we had a lot, of, uh, a lot of chatter on that poll. We did. We did. People like, uh, like to be funny. Ha, 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 You know the best part? The monorail that? that connects them all together. Monorail. Monorail. That's monorail. one rail, isn't it? Yes. It put Shelbyville on a map. <laughs> oh, look what happened to Shelbyville. I call it the big one, baby. <laughs> uh, Jeff, how are you doing over there? Anything going on? Nothing's going on. Okay. Okay. I'm mentally I'm, I'm mentally exhausted from uh, work this week, but um, I was looking forward to tonight, so that's good. I 120% um, almost did not get out of the car to come in. So. I could see that. I could see that. We don't have to um, talk about that, though. Yeah. So we are sorry and big hugs. I was uh, – my family was very upset last night when we heard about that. So um, – but we're going to have a fun time, Brian. We're going to do, we're going to move on. Yeah. We're going to have a good time. So uh, moving on here. Oh, I, I do want to say something. Yes. Th- throw out a, a happy belated birthday uh-huh. to uh, uh, Scab Jeff. Oh, uh, uh, Jeff Morris and, and his beautiful wife Jen. They they happy share birthday. A birthday and they had their birthday this past Saturday. Congratulations! They had a party and Jeff was pretty much passed out when I got there. <laughs> what time did you get there? Uh, Two p.m. That's about when he started. I got there about six thirty. Oh, okay. I, I got okay. Th- he, he he was pretty drunk, and from what I understand, and mm-hmm. he doesn't listen to this, he probably won't hear it anyway. From what I understand. He doesn't remember drinking. He doesn't remember starting the grill. Oh, and he was grilling when I was there. When I got there, he was grilling. Did he fall asleep on the grill? Oh no, no, no. He was he was up for a couple hours. Oh, okay, okay. But then, yeah. <laughs> did he grill anything on the grill? Oh, yes, he did. Okay, just making sure. You know, burgers and dogs. Okay, I didn't know if he was just standing there <laughs> with just a spatula. <laughs> hey guys, you need anything? We're good, bro. We're good, Jeff. I mean, good Jeff. Other people had to make sure that the food got from the grill to the proper place. <laughs> or finished cooking. That could be a good game show this fall. Drunk grilling? Yes! And you have to get the grill. You not only grill it, it has to be done, so it can't be raw. Yeah, if, and, you're, if your burger, you're disqualified if you don't cook it properly. And you got to get on a plate and mo- go through an obstacle course. I like this. And you have to remember to turn off the propane. Yeah, who who would be the host of the of a show like that? Ooh, Ooh. drunk grilling. Um, I mean, Nick Ryan o- Lochte, the dumbass uh, swimmer. Offerman. Like Nick Offerman, I feel like would be a good host. Of that. <laughs> I think Offerman's too classy for it. I, I, I kind of like the Ryan Lochte choice. Yeah, he was stupid on uh, uh, what was that? Traders. <laughs> oh, he was on Traders. Yeah, season one. He's not smart. <laughs> well, then maybe I don't want him on my show then. <laughs> He's not a smart guy. Uh, I, I could, see, in all honesty, I could see Gronkowski doing it. <laughs> I wouldn't watch it. Well, I wouldn't watch it. I'm just saying I could see him doing it. Well, if it's on our network, I want to watch. It. Okay. Something, if we're going to put it out there, I want to be able to watch so it. So we got, how about this? We what have about Greg Olson. I hear, I hear he needs a new job. Well, he's the number two guy right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he only took a $7 million pay cut. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, Tom Brady. Hey, um, hey, 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 hey. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My bad. Easy. My bad. My easy. bad. I'll go easy on you this week, Brian. I'll go easy, easy. on Tom Brady. Oh, I am glad you're here, Brian. I am glad you're here. Um, <sighs> Me too. And let's see here. Um, I think that was all pretty much. Um, before we uh, go ahead and introduce listener feedback, Brian, I'll let you do that here. Uh, listener feedback. Good. Sponsored by Hello Jeff. 
but what's in the box this week? <laughs> uh, I love that Hello Jeff. <laughs> their tagline is "What's in the box." <laughs> Uh, uh, Hobie Pot is twenty percent off. It's all the stuff left over from Scab Jeff's birthday party. Okay, okay. So, so there's cheeseburgers, syphilis, and hamburgers. Okay. Although I think all the burgers got cheese, <laughs> so maybe you only get a cheeseburger okay. or a hot dog. Are they g- cooked already? Some could be. <laughs> you just have to microwave them. Yeah. Hey, it's like uh, the pulled pork. Je- Jeff, uh, okay, uh, smoked some pulled pork that was okay. really good. That. He probably doesn't remember. <laughs> it's in there, though. But that's in there. Okay. Uh, some some chips and okay and, and beers. I think there might be beers in there for those people who are of drinking age subscribed. Are the chips in fr- uh, free range or are they in a bag? Yes. Okay. Just checking. Just checking. Ooh. That sounds it's, delightful. It's your ultimate picnic. I mean, you know, I mean, nothing the, the buds set... are included. There's... I, I... To be fair, three different types of uh-huh. uh, barbecue sauce in there. Okay. Wow. To be fair, I mean, you know, this is a great week to get that box. You know, Memorial Day coming up. It is coming you up. Know, save you. save the the time at the grill. Get get your Hello Jeff <laughs> box. Everything's half grilled for you anyway. Yeah, you just gotta finish <laughs> finish it off and you know top it as you'd like. Some of it could be grilled. Uh, is the barbecue sauce in jars or free? It's in packets. It's in packets. Okay. Or okay. at least in it's a... It's actually just Arby sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Horsey sauce. <laughs> it, it, it's just in a... Uh, a Tupperware? Sa- sandwich bag. <laughs> in a Ziploc. Not, not even a Ziploc. Uh, <laughs> we kind um, of hit the, the old fold over to fold it over. And we hope it will hold. Hey. Because <laughs> the people delivering these packages wouldn't screw them over. No, no. Post office does too good of a job. Uh, do we know... Did did. Did Pittsburgh Nerd ever get his thing? That Pittsburgh I, that... Nerd did want to tell uh, tell us thank you okay. for their mixer. Oh, um, well, we pay- the USPS but, did something good. Yes, they did. Um, so the nice thing is um, a couple years ago, uh, we had some funds, and we bought a really nice mixer, um, a Zoom P8 uh, mixer. And well, That only has one problem. What's that? The uh, format the button, button. Four ba- buttons too close to the save button. For fat fingers, it is. <laughs> so for that's DJ fat fingers to you. It has great sound effects. It's yeah, uh, that's not the sound effect. Oh, okay. Has great sound effects. Uh, it's, it's a pretty easy system to use, right? And uh, so we uh, had a mixer that Doctor Bednar gave us. And we said, hey, do you want it back or do you want us to play, pay it forward? And he said, pay it forward. So we are go- we paid it forward by give, uh, sending it to Pittsburgh Nerd. And uh, they were very appreciative of it. So uh, we're very happy to pay, uh, pay it forward uh, on that. Uh, Brian, what do you got for listener feedback? All right. Uh, listener feedback, we always start off with that one guy. Beaver hands. Eight bit. Eight hands. Seven. Can't give yourself a nickname. Chili Billy. Screwdriver. Jewel of the Licking. Uh, Sunny D. The Postman. Uh, Kurt Rambo expert. Kurt Rambus expert. The Hammer. Oh. Um, Dad. Dad. Yeah, there you go. Um, Doug. Yeah. Yeah, it's just Doug. Mm-hmm. Tippy Turtle. <laughs> Did you just say Tippy Turtle? Yep. I can see that. If you flipped him over on his back, I don't think he's getting up. <laughs> I mean, his hands, he could be able to like reach the ground with his gigantic hands. Yeah, but they would leave craters, so he would just keep going down farther into the earth. <laughs> when he oh, tries to uh, get... we, uh, we forgot Dunkaroo Doug. Oh, yeah, Dunkaroo oh. Doug. That's right. Coming um, to Fox next fall. Yeah, I, yeah, I got some <laughs> ideas for that. Okay, <laughs> when you said he could go into the ground by doing that, I'm thinking, is he Dig Dug? Yes, and I thought, Dig Dug. Dig Dug's a good one. <laughs> That's a fun game. Dig Dug. Uh, it's just Doug. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Doug wants to know why is Oppenheimer so praised when it is just the movie version of the Rush song Manhattan Project? Getty Lee deserves an Oscar. I don't know any of this stuff, so... I, I can't deny that Getty Lee deserves an Oscar. Is he in Rush? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, he is the uh, lead singer, singer and bass player and keyboardist. Is he alive Rush. still? Yes. Yes, he is. Is Rush still a band? Yes. I mean, they're not active. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, Neil still... Peart did pass away a couple of years back, so oh. they really haven't done any touring or released anything new. They made in a couple the... Uh, Surviving members did make a couple of appearances at other places and gotcha. whatnot. But Are they in the Hall of Fame? Yes. Yes. Okay. Just checking. And 
a tidbit I learned mm-hmm. last week. The highest charting Rush song, at least in America, mm-hmm. or I'm sorry, the highest charting song that Getty Lee appears on mm-hmm. is the Bob and Doug McKenzie song. Tom Sawyer? No. Huh. <laughs> uh, oh, shit. What, uh, what's the thing that you used to always say? Uh... What's up? <laughs> Brother. No. Uh, oh, shit. What... <laughs> what's that all about? Uh, take off. Take on me? Take off. Oh. Take off, you holzer. Oh, okay. The name of the song was Take Off. Okay. And then Getty Lee was... I, it was on the radio last week. Mm-hmm. And I'm letting it's like, oh, Bob and Doug McKenzie, and they're doing their blah, blah, blah. And the refrain hits, and I'm like, that sounds like Getty Lee. <laughs> and, he's, and he's like, take off to the great wide north. Take off. <laughs> and I'm, I had to look it up when I got home. I'm like, that was Getty Lee. And was like, this was the highest uh, charting song that Getty Lee ever performed on. Did they do the song that... Perf- <laughs> This is going to sound bad. This is how I remember it. Did they do the song back in the 70s that appeared in Bugs Life, the trailer for Bugs Life that was out here in the No, that's the who. Is it? Oh. (laughs) I'm I'm trying to figure out what song. Out here in the valley. Out uh, here. Out here in the streets. Yeah, that's it. (laughs) Yeah, that, I think you're singing Bubba O'Reilly by the Who. Yes, yes. You, you should just know it from out here. Come on, yeah, Jack. Out here. Yes, that I is mean, I the thought Who. You were singing five old American Tale songs. No, let's go something. west. That's the second one. Oh, yeah, sorry, my bad. Uh, I don't know music. <laughs> really, I, I never I knew I've that. Come to realize that. Now you might be aware of Bob and Doug McKenzie from listening to them every Christmas doing the uh, their. Uh, 12 Days of Christmas no. version of no. Bob and Doug McKenzie's 12 Days of Christmas. No. Uh, the only 12 Days of Christmas I listen to is the one that Henno sent us. Uh, the Hobie 12 Days of Christmas. Uh, what else you got here, Brian? Uh, there you go, Doug. Uh, yeah. From Nisi, uh, she says, Oreo is collaborating with Star Wars for something new. Are you excited? So they're doing um, red and blue, I think. Uh, the light side and the dark side. Uh, Oreos, and you don't know what package you get until you open it. But my issue is this. I think Jim said this, too. We would have been happier if they had different flavors. Yeah, I'm about to say if it's just colors, then no. Like you could have done a cherry and like a blueberry or something like that. Uh, Or blue milk. You could have called it blue milk. How did we? They screwed this up. They could have called it blue milk Oreos. But then what would the red be called? Uh, Red milk? Satan's anus. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think that goes with uh, uh, Star Wars, Wars now. I don't think anybody would have wanted to buy that. Uh, lava. Lava. <gasps> Mustafar lava. Yeah. Oh. See? It would have worked. Fucking messed that up, Oreo. Yeah. Yeah. If, if Oreo Star Wars collaboration, like you said, was a different flavor, mm-hmm. even if it's the same flavor, just different colors, I'd yeah. find. But if it's just going to be. The Oreo cookie with yeah. different color cream. That does not excite me. No, it does not. So, very disappointed. Uh, Brian, you're excited about the Star Wars Oreos, right? What are those? Uh, it's a movie. A uh, couple of movies. Uh, Oreos lo- or movies? Both. Oh. I- oh, oh, give it time. I'm sure they'll make an Oreo movie. I mean, I would probably watch it if it were the, St- the Sour Patch Kids Oreo movie. Oh, yeah. Those are so good. Uh, I mean, still like those two weeks later. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I guess I'm excited. Uh, it's an Oreo. Yeah, I mean, I'll eat it. Uh, Jeff, do we have some Meow God music? I think uh-huh. we do. Do we? Uh, somewhere. Somewhere. Somewhere over nope, the that's rainbow. that's not it. No. Okay, you can stop that now. Sorry. I don't know where the Meow God is. Seriously. Well. Seriously. Like, you, like, I'm supposed to, like, look ahead at this stuff and figure it out. Next page. Next page. There you go. Oh. Thank you. Meow. What the hell was that? Sorry. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, from Meow God, at Meow God, if you guys are made of candy, what flavor would you be, and would you eat each other? Wow. Um, I'm going on the assumption that that would still be cannibalism. You know, and that's frowned upon, right? Uh, it is, unless you're Army Hammer. Uh, his estate, at least, at least in his house. Okay, 
So I would say no. I don't think I would. No. I, I don't even know what flavor you guys would be. But I'm sure I would probably be something sour. Maybe a, a sour lemony flavor. Oh, okay. I was going to do a sour cherry for me. Sour cherry. Uh, Brian? Um, could see Brian being maybe a peep? <laughs> I don't think he would be a marshmallow flavor at all. No. I could see Brian maybe being like a peppermint. No. What's your favorite candy? Chocolate? I'm going to go with uh, that was on my my bunker list last week. Um, uh, caramel cream. Oh, uh, okay, okay. I mean, I mean, I probably would eat that. I mean, um, if, if if needed be, I could eat my, myself, and then it would grow back, right? Yeah, yeah. I got Obviously. that. Obviously. So, so Brian, that, that's how that works. Right? So Jeff and I are sours, and Brian's ca- caramel cream. That kind of seems that kind of fits the show, actually. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, sorry. Uh, You're right. My my digital outline went away. I know. I apologize. Yeah, this thanks. Week. Sorry. Uh, from Pittsburgh Nerd. Uh-huh. Uh huh. They ask, "What is your dream car?" <sighs> the Homer. <laughs> well, the great thing about the Homer is, mm-hmm. in normal cars, you n- can never find the horn when you need it. That's right. But in the Homer, they got horns there, 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 and there. Yes. Yes. So that's what's great about the Homer. Yeah, uh, that's tough. What's your, you're, you're not. We're not no. big car guys. No, we're definitely. Brian, not you're not a car guy, guy, are you? Um, not really. But I do have a car that, if I ever had the ability to buy, I would buy it. Okay, what is that? Uh, it's a '69 Chevelle. Okay. okay. Uh, black with a white racing stripe. Okay. I'm about to say, my ideal car is one that's paid off. That's dream car, he says. Not ideal. Yeah. Well, my dream car is one that's paid off. One okay, that that's I don't a good have call. to continue making payments. On. You know what? I agree with that. We're buying a new car next month, and I agree with that. And, and I know that makes me sound boring and a pain in the butt, but honestly, like, if it gets me from point A to point B, I'm fine with it. Uh, comfortably, I guess. The, yeah. The better, the more comfortable it is, the better, but. We're looking at a, van, a minivan and my uh, daughter. Uh, first world problems here. Uh, she was mad because we're also looking at an SUV, and the SUV does not have reclining seats in the back with like a footrest that comes up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, my bad. My bad on that one. <laughs> she was very upset um, that my car is a 2009 and still runs great. And, uh, knock on wood. And uh, when I take them up to the bus stop, if it's raining or something, she gets mad because it doesn't have heated seats. <laughs> I'm like, really sorry there, girl. <laughs> my bad. My bad. Must suck to live in your life. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Would you like the LTD that had frozen seats when you had it when I was growing up? The 79 LTD? In the winter, the pleather was like oh, cold as anything. Yeah, oh. In the summer, it was like scolding hot. You had to put <laughs> towels down. Oh, my God. In pretty much any season, you had to put towels down. Yes, you did. It was awful. But it was a tank. I will say, as a child growing up, I always was a big fan of the uh, Lamborghini Countach. Okay. And I guess if I had to pick a car, mm-hmm. but anymore, I mean, realistically, I mean, I mean, it's, I, I would be driving fifty miles an hour. Like, <laughs> car that does two fifty. Uh, Go round. Uh, I growing up. Um, I was always a big fan of the Dodge Stealth. Remember those? Yeah. Uh, and obviously, I was like 17, 18, because I had a Dodge Daytona as my first car uh, with the flip-up headlights. And, uh, yeah. Uh, but I, re- I remember always wanting a Dodge Stealth, and then I think they lasted like five years. <laughs> and they're like, ah, we're getting rid of these. Um, they did not take off like they hoped. Ah! Ba-bump-bump. Bump. Take off. Stealth. Get it? I, I don't. I don't. But <laughs> Like a stealth plane? Take off? Oh. Uh, no. You know what? It's not funny when I have to explain it, Jeff. It's yeah. not funny even if you didn't explain it. Shut up, Jeff. You, you explained it, and it's still bad. Uh, what else you got here? Uh, wrapping up listener feedback with professor number one at doctor number mm-hmm. one. He says, who is your favorite sports announcer? <sighs> Um, that's a good question. I will say the one person who I actually enjoyed listening to, like do- during ah, doing an NFL game, mm-hmm. was Brian Billick. Really? But he only really did one or two years. I mean, 
he was teamed up with Tom Brenneman. And <laughs> I enjoyed listening to those games because I really liked Brian Billick. Okay. I did not like him as a coach. Mm-hmm. I hated him and the team that he coached. But when he was announcing, and then they got rid of him to bring in, I don't even remember who else. Farts Romo, McGee. maybe. <laughs> Romo. But so it's like, oh, now I really don't know. I mean, I guess uh, I guess Bob Costas is good. I like uh, Joe Testero. Testero? I can never say his name right. I don't know who that is. Um, he, d- he did Holy Moly, but he also did Monday Night Football, I believe. Um, I'll show you his picture. There you go. Joe Testero? Testor. Uh, yeah. He I does a lot of college before, football. But... He's hilarious. Uh, he does a really do- good job. He gets the emotion across. Because um, who was the other guy? Gus Bradley, I think that was. Or Gus something. Uh, Johnson. Gus Johnson was the guy that got the... Um, college basketball. Yeah. He's very similar to that, but a little bit more toned down in that. Um, so, yeah. I'm going with him. Who you got, Brian? Romo? God, fuck no. <laughs> um, You're a Collinsworth fan, right? God, no. Uh, better than his son. I've never heard his son. Uh, his son does the pregame show, and like does he's about as bad as Guy uh, Fieri. Guy Fieri's son. Yes. Oh, no, that bad. And he spells his name Jack Collinsworth as J A C. Get the fucking K. <coughs> Dumbass. I mean, his dad's C R I S. I know. I guess so it's just stupid a, name spellings go roll, runs in their it's family. A, it's a terrible family name. Well, thing. mine's J E F. That's true. That is true. But that's your that's your call. That's your DJ name too. No, my DJ name is DJ Fatface. Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, uh, I I don't know. I, Greg Olson's good. Yeah, I mean he's not bad. Um, <laughs> Put it on the poster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is he seven million dollars better? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You know, um, maybe this time next year I'll be saying. Uh, Tom Brady's my favorite sports announcer. It's not happening, but you know, I doubt it. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you go with Tom Brady? <laughs> uh, I mean, he hasn't been bad. That's that's very true. <laughs> uh, he has not been bad yet. Troy Aikman, God, no. Al Michaels. I I was thinking Al, but no, like he's. No, are we including like the pregame people? No, it's announcers. Okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess I'll. I, 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 I don't know. I, Pick I, one, Brian. Um, that awesome. Joe, Joe Nuxall. There you go. There you go. I liked him. I did too. I grew up with him and Marty. Yeah, on the Reds. The thing I liked about Joe is he didn't give unnecessary words. Correct. You you knew what was happening accurately. Most of the time. Most of he, the time, yeah. The, the problem was when you got like you got in the car and you weren't sure if you were on the right station or not. Because he wasn't talking. Was the, it's like you just hear noise. Like, is that static? Or yeah. <laughs> are, you're, or is that, are there Especially people? before digital yes. radios where it was yeah. the analog. You, can I get the station in? Sometimes you don't even say necessary words. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, yeah. okay, give me some feedback here. <laughs> what happened to Ken Griffey Jr.? <laughs> But when, when you get a home you, run, what? <laughs> when you're used to that, and then years later we get Tom Brenneman doing the game, <laughs> where I swear to God, in his mind he was paid by the word because <laughs> he never shut up. So bomb the ninth here, two outs, uh, Reds coming up. You know, I went to dinner with my wife the other day at the boathouse, and I'll tell you one thing. That boathouse, we had a waiter there, uh, all three. Uh, anyways, and then this waiter, his name was Chris. Uh, <laughs> Shut up, Tom. Tell me the game. Uh, Jeff, can you give me some news of the geek music over there? Over there. I can. Over there. That's not a song. We won't come back till we're done. Over there. Please stop it. (laughs) It's time for a brand new installment of the news of the geek. Per comicbookmovie.com, where Jeff gets all of his news from. None of it. After lending his voice to the character in 2018's Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Nicolas Cage is set to reprise the role of Spider- Spider-Man Noir in MGM Plus and Prime Video's Noir. According to Variety, the series will debut in the U.S. on MGM's Linear or Plus Linear Channel. I didn't even know that was a thing. Before launching globally on an Amazon streaming service. 
Quote, expanding the universe with Noir is a uniquely special opportunity, and we are honored to bring the series to our global Prime Video customers, said Vernon Sanders, head of television for Amazon MGM Studios. The extremely talented Nicolas Cage is an ideal choice for our new superhero. Is this a different Nicolas Cage than I'm aware of? Uh, Maybe this one has an H in it? Maybe. Well, it's the extremely talented one. It's true. It's got to be different than the one I'm aware of. Uh, producing team with Phil Lord, Christopher Miller, Amy Pascal. Oh, geez. Oh, it's Amy. She's back. Yeah, they got Lord and Miller. And the incredible team at Sony. Mm, is it an incredible team? You could have just said the team at Sony. Uh, let's well, see here. It's also the extremely talented Nicolas Cage. So take That's that with a grain of salt. Uh, while we don't know if Cage is playing a Peter Parker variant in the series, I'm guessing yes, an official log line says Noir tells the story of, quote, an aging and down-on-his-luck private investigator, Nicholas Cage, in the 1930s New York, who is forced to grapple with his past life as the city's one and only superhero. It's a live-action show, too. It's not a cartoon. Oh. Yeah. We are oh. absolutely through. Oh, yeah. Uh, no one else could bring such pathos, pain, and heart to the singular character, said Catherine Pope, president of Sony Pictures. Uh, let's see here. Sony has struggled with expanding the Spider-Man universe <sighs> in theaters with movies like Venom, Morbius, and Madame Web, drawing mixed to negative reviews. Spider-Man 4 is in the works starring Tom Holland, but uh, the difference there is Marvel Studios, Studios is heavily involved on the creative side. So, yeah, uh, when Venom is your best one out of uh, those, that's not a good sign. Is Venom better than Madame Web? Yeah, I'm going to say that. Uh, I saw uh, everything wrong with Madam Web, and I, those seven minutes was enough for me. <laughs> I saw that feature on it. Uh, Brian, good news. What's that? Speak of uh, uh, Marvel films and yes. shows. They just came out. They're rebranding Marvel. Oh, good. So get ready. They said, Marvel Studios said, now you don't have to watch the TV shows to be caught up on the movies. <laughs> So they don't they they will interconnect a little bit, but not something that you have to see. Oh, so the good news is you only have twenty eight films to catch up on. Forget the TV series, forget the coming TV series because like Agatha, uh, but but you have to watch the old shows though. You know, well that's a detail they did left out. You, but yes, to, to get what was going on in say uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, yes. you really needed to see WandaVision. That is true. That is true. Uh, uh, but going uh, forward, from this point on, oh, from, oh, this, from this point, point forward, yes, just be excited, Brian. Cool, cool, uh, cool, cool, uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's that's great for me. <laughs> um, I really like that. In other words, Marvel, Marvel is like, we really don't know what the fuck we're doing anymore. Can you just come watch our shows, um, which they should have done in the beginning? Um, yeah, it worked well for DC. Uh, per comfortmovie dot com, where Jeff gets all business from. None of it. DC Studios Chapter 1, Gods and Monsters Slate, left us with plenty to be excited about, did it? But news of a Booster Gold TV series coming to Max was arguably among James Gunn's most thrilling announcements. I do agree. I love Booster Gold. Fans have been waiting a long time to see the time-traveling superhero in live action. All signs point to Zolo Mandarin's Blue Beetle oh, God. Uh, joining the time-traveling uh, superhero, basically the, the character in the Blue Beetle film. That's awesome. I'm yeah. fine with that. Uh, did you ever see Blue Beetle? I never have. It's uh, it's on. You have Max? I do have Max. I, I would definitely recommend it. Um, it's guess, a fun film to watch and not have to worry about a, a thousand films before. I guess the question I have is, you know, obviously Blue Beetle and Booster Gold were a team, but mm -hmm. it was a different Blue Beetle. It was Ted Cord, yeah. Blue Beetle. But in the Blue Beetle film, they do mention Ted Cord. He okay. is in it. Uh, well, his lab and everything um so that was kind of cool um yeah i i think there's like you know what we already have a blue beetle he got really good reviews keep him uh he's young let him do it um a recent so does that make blue beetle like the first movie f in this so here's the universe? here's the tr here's the trouble part where brian and people like brian get pissed off what do you mean people like me uh i'll get to it here okay common sense uh james oh. gunn said yeah hey Blue Beetle is part of the new DC universe, and his film is okay to be included, but it's not in the DC universe. <laughs> so we're like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> one or the other. Come on, one or the other. I don't understand it. <laughs> I don't get it. 
Anyways, a production list update suggested Booster Gold will start shoot- shooting in July. Now, Skipper, Scooper, my time to shine H, has chimed in claiming that this is indeed the case. Uh, the fact, uh, One fact is the character has supposedly been cast in the DCU already. We don't know who will play Booster as we write this, but Guardians of the Galaxy Chris Pratt remains a fan favorite choice among many DV- DC fans. He even said last year, if James thought I was right for it, then you know that uh, I would have to consider it. Well, you know Chris Pratt will work with James Gunn. Yeah. But uh, find somebody else. We we don't need him. Just get an unknown, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I like Chris Pratt, so it's not... Yeah. But it's just that, okay, those of us in the superhero world, we don't need the same guy to be playing multiple people no. over and over. I mean, okay, a couple times it worked out well, you know, yeah. uh, with... Uh, the what's his name uh, Chris Evans mm-hmm. moving from one superhero Michael B Jordan franchise to another well uh, he should never have been cast in Fantastic no well, that should never have been made that correct we, we ignore that that Thanks, existed uh, Brian do you know what Booster Gold is no okay I'll give you some background he actually is a fun character it's a lot, pretty light hearted uh, he said the comedy series will explore imposter syndrome as a superhero. Uh, DC Studio, Studios co-CEO Peter Saffron has described the character as a loser. Well, this is a comic book thing, too. He's a loser from the future who uses basic uh, futuristic technology to come back to today, present day. He pretends to be a superhero. Carter, the character, the guy, is disillusioned by his lack of success and fame in his own time, steals advanced technology, including a powered suit and a robotic sidekick named Skeets, travels back to the 20th century to become a superhero. Initially motivated by fame and fortune, Booster Gold eventually matures into a genuine hero using his abilities to protect the innocent and uphold justice. The comic book series is really good with him. Like yeah. They've done that a couple times. Um, but his series is hilarious because the whole time you're like, oh, my God, everybody's fooled thinking this guy's a superhero. Yeah. And he, I think he was an actor in this uh, in I the future. Like that. Yeah, so everybody – and it turned out, you know, when he actually did his best stuff, he was getting no recognition. You know? Yes. When he finally, like, did something to help people, not because the cameras were shown, because it was the right thing to do, no one ever found out. Correct. Um, but, yeah, and he's good friends with Blue Beetle in the show, a series, uh, comic book. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, I think this would be great. Personally, years ago when they were talking about Booster Gold uh, coming to the old DC films, yeah. uh, Nathan Fillion was mentioned as it, uh, uh, which would have been tremendous. He was also uh, mentioned as Wonder Man in the Marvel side of it. I think I have heard that. Yeah. Um, but now Nathan Fillion's actually playing Guy Gardner, Green Lantern, which I'm not sure if he's a good pick on that one. Um, it, I like it, Nathan Fillion. He'll make it good. Yeah. I, he, that's the problem is they should have put him as uh, Hal Jordan, Green Lantern. I would have been fine with that. Um, yeah. But, yeah, they're going to – and, again, I think he has the acting to do it. It just doesn't seem like he would. Guy Gardner is like a younger, brasher, arrogant ass, and I don't see that as Nathan Fillion. So, I'm sure uh, Nathan Fillion could play arrogant ass. Yeah, I think I did see Firefly. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so there you uh, go. I've seen the rookie. Rook, he is good in the rookie. He's fantastic. Uh, so yeah, so there, there is your news of the geek, Jeff. Um, do you have a promo? Uh, from Jock and Nerd, I think that we would like to play. Maybe. 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 There it is. Do you ever wonder when Spider-Man goes to the bathroom with the toilet paper sticks to his fingers? Do you ever wonder why Superman wears his underwear outside of his pants? My name is Imran. My name is Anthony. He's the jock. And he's the nerd. And we're your hosts for the Jock and Nerd podcast, where we sometimes try to attempt to answer these questions. This is a full spoiler podcast, and we swear a lot. Check it out for awesome geek news, interviews, and comic book reviews. Visit jockandnerd.com. We are your superhero TV, movies, and comic book culture curators. Boom. Jockandnerd.com. Jock and Nerd. Jock and Nerd. I like those guys. They, they, they are good guys. Yes. Uh, Jeff, got some box office news? And I, I, I do. I even got this little... Oh, wait. I have to change the page. Seriously, DJ? Well... You threw me off by throwing... Just fucking hit the button. It's time for Box Office Bombs. It's a very mystery science theater thing. (laughs) (laughs) When the scientists are like, just hit the button. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, Movies did good this week, so no no real bombs. Okay. 
uh, the top five of May 17th through the 19th of 2024 at number one, Imaginary Friends, or IF, mm-hmm. made $35 million in its opening weekend on a $110 million budget. Uh, it was supposed to be, be uh, they were expecting 40 to $45 million. Oh, well, they overexpected that. Yeah. My seven-year-old is actually seeing it this weekend. Um, he's going to a birthday party, and they rented out theater for this. Nice. Yeah. I have a feeling like this one isn't necessarily a first week is going to Mm-mm. be, but I think it, it'll have staving power enough to, you know, make a decent profit. Yes. I'll. We'll get to that in the upcoming. Go ahead. Coming in at number two, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Made another twenty six million, a total of one hundred one million on a one hundred sixty million dollar budget. I believe it's two fifty nine worldwide. I'm looking forward to this. Pretty good. Mm-hmm. Way to go, Planet of the Apes. Coming in at number three, The Strangers <laughs> Chapter One made twelve million in its opening weekend on a budget of eight million. So, scary movies in general get yep. really good listen. Uh, get really good um, fan praise, right? Yep. Uh, they come out the the, crit, uh, the critics usually bash them. Yeah. But the fans, the fans love them, and the yeah lower budgets, and they tend to opening weekend close to double what their budget. Not so much made. on this one. Uh, it did well, yeah, I about but to say, the fans have not liked it, so they said the staying power may not be much. Well, most scary movies or horror movies don't have cool. staying power, especially in in May. <laughs> yeah. uh, but Strangers Chapter Two comes out in fall. Chapter oh. Three comes out next uh, May. We'll see how those go. If uh, the- yeah. People are disappointed in one, two, and three may suck. This is directed by uh, Rennie Harlan from uh, oh, Cutthroat oh. Island fame. So, Mr. Gina Davis. Yes, yes. Or is it the former Mr. Gina former. Davis? Former. They, they are yeah. no longer. Yeah, they're divorced. Coming in at number four, The Fall Guy made $8.5 million, a total of $63 million on a $125 million budget. Did you watch this? Uh, we have not seen it. Well, the good news is you can rent it now. On home video. That's good. Two and a half weeks at the box office, they did not get the numbers they wanted, so they sent it to streaming. I mean, well, I'm sorry, or what is that? Video on demand? Yeah, yeah. So you can rent it now for 20 bucks. Uh, I did see that uh, Iron Claw is now uh, yes. available to stream for free. On, on Max. A, is it on Max or yeah. Amazon? At Max. It's okay. on Max. Do you, have you seen that? Not yet. I, was, uh, I had every intention on watching it um, last night, but did not get to it. Um... So hopefully this week I will be watching it. What did we rent? Oh, it was Ghostbusters First Empire. We talked about that last week. Yep. Sorry. Go ahead. I was trying to think what we rented. I thought uh, there was something out there. Go ahead. Coming in at number five, Challengers made $2.9 million, a total of $43.5 million on a $55 million budget. Sure. Uh, go Challengers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, upcoming. Movies coming out May 31st. May 31st? May 24th. That, that sounds more accurate. Yeah, I think it's May 24th. <laughs> Damn you, intern fax machine. Damn it. I'm like, that, that's not right. That's no. We, no we're, we're talking about Memorial Day weekend. Yes. We have Furiosa coming out. It's a Furiosa colon a Mad Max saga. Oh, oh, I missed the colon. I missed that one, too. Uh, it's, the ori- <laughs> it's the origin story of renegade warrior Furiosa before her encounter and team up with Mad Max. Did you guys see Fury Road? Yes. Loved it. Did you? Okay. It was so yeah. good. Did you I see it? it? No, I have not seen it. I couldn't get into it. And I, I, I didn't finish it. And I, I, maybe I need to go back to it. Maybe I was, just, you know how you're just in one of those movies, like when you watch a movie, you're just like, yeah, I'm not feeling it. Maybe I need to go back and watch it because I've heard great things. I, um, yeah, I'm kind of bummed that Tom Hardy hasn't come back for the sequel that he is supposed to be in in this. Yet. Are they making a sequel? Supposedly. Yeah. Huh. He, he's supposed to be back. Okay. Um, But. I guess for one reason or the other, it just never came around. So they came up with this instead. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, but yeah, no, I I very much liked it. It was it was a really good f- uh, film to see in the theater, like the the Fury Road. Yeah, Fury Road was. Um, so I imagine this one will probably be really good too. Uh, I was trying to see here. Give me one second. We've got uh, Fury is um, Anya Taylor Joy, Chris Hemsworth. Um, those are the only two people I've ever heard in this movie. Uh, fifty million is what they're expecting. They'll get it. Uh, is what's her name not in it? Uh, Charlize, Charlize Theron Charlize? is not. No, oh. she's in the sequel. 
I heard that she makes an appearance in the sequel of Fury Road, but not this one. Well, if they ever make it. Uh, yeah. So these, I, guess, I guess it's a, a much younger Furiosa. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is before she meets Mad Max. So... Uh, yeah, they're tracking fifty million. What else you got, Jeff? And also coming out, we have Garfield. I don't know how this uh, is a thing. after Garfield's unexpected reunion with his long lost father, Ragged Alley Cat Vic. He and his canine friend Odie are forced to f- forced from their perfectly pampered lives to join Vic on a risky heist. On the positive, it's not live action CGI crap like Little the old Bill ones. Murray movies. Yeah, they're expecting thirty five million on this one. I, um I it's a car it's a full on animated show. But my wife and I were watching T V last night and this came on the trailer and one I completely forgot that Chris Pratt was the voice of Garfield yeah. in this. This is it's got a huge cast. Does it? Chris Pratt, mm-hmm. Samuel L. Jackson, Hannah Waddingham, Ving Rames, Jesus. Nicholas Holt, Cecily Strong, Harvey Guillen, Brett Goldstein, Bowen Yang, Snoop Dogg. Jeez, old Pete. A lot of people who have very distinct voices. Yeah. Yes. And Chris Pratt. Um, the thing is, though, like, uh, we saw the trailer, and I'm like, why? Like, I get it. Like, Garfield is, I guess, well-known. But does anyone now? Like, but when we were growing up, right, you had plushes. You had, you know, those I Garfield think- small books. Remember those books that you would get, oh, like, I- the long ones uh, with the comic strips in it? Like, I, I don't think anybody, like, in my kid's generation even gives a shit about yeah, Garfield. I have no clue. I mean, I guess the newspaper comics aren't really a thing these days. No. <laughs> so. I, mean, I, I, they, I think they, I mean, they I still mean, are, but well, nobody reads yeah, them. Yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, I true. think, honestly, I, they're your just. your kids picked up a, a newspaper to read the comics? <laughs> no, they always go, what the hell are you reading <laughs> when I do get a newspaper? Um, and I go, I know this is a piece of shit <laughs> inquire. I think they're uh, they're just banking on our generation taking their kids. I guess. I mean, obviously, if they're tracking thirty five million, and maybe I'm out of the loop. I, I just saw it, and I'm like, you're telling me there's not better like IPs out there that you could make, <laughs> like U.S. Acres. Uh, <laughs> maybe <throw that> <laughs> you, you, you mean the spinoff of Garfield, yes. <laughs> the and friends part of Garfield yes. and friends. I just, again, like said, obviously I, they know something I don't, but it just boggles my mind like some of these things. Like Scooby-Doo is still making new series, new comic books, like that stuff. So I get the Scooby-Doo. But like Garfield is like that, that hasn't been in the zeitgeist in years. Well, they're trying to get it back. I guess. I guess this so. Is, this is what's going to get the kids back into Garfield. You know, my seven-year-old's just like, man, you see what that Garfield does? He hates Mondays. <laughs> But he loves lasagna. Oh, my gosh. My 14-year-old loves lasagna. Maybe he'll go to it. Oh, has a, been waiting for a lasagna film. Again, this is another. It's like, I like Chris Pratt, but if we make him do the voice of everything, then everything's just going to sound like Chris Pratt. Yeah. He does it with an like, Italian accent. Yeah, it's like he's Mario, and now he's Garfield. Mario and Garfield shouldn't sound alike. <laughs> Maybe they won't. Just, I've heard clips of both. They sound like Chris Pratt. <laughs> But Odie doesn't talk. I mean, honestly, they they sound like the older brother from that uh, one Pixar movie. Uh, oh, Onward Bound. Onward, onward, yeah. onward, onward. Not Onward Bound. That's Homeward. That's bound. Homeward Bound. <laughs> Very different films. Yes, yes. Anything else coming out that we missed? Uh, yeah. Let's see. We've got a movie called Sight coming out. Oh. Uh, Can't wait to see it. Twenty twenty three film getting released. A blind orphan arrives in his waiting room seeking a miracle. A world-renowned eye surgeon must confront his past and draw on the resilience he gained growing up in China during the Cultural Revolution to try to restore her sight. Unfortunately, the surgeon has a car accident on the way to the to the uh, surgery and becomes a wizard, <laughs> Doctor Strange. Um, apparently, oh, this is the inspiring true. true story. Oh, of, I can't wait! Story. Of Ming Wang. Ming Na Wen. Uh, no, Ming oh. Wang, oh. who flees uh, communist China to become a oh. pioneering eye surgeon in America. I'm already falling asleep just from the description. <laughs> God. Uh, Greg can, Greg, Spoilers, I bet you she fixes him. That doesn't sound uh, like a bad movie to me, to be honest. Yeah. Terry Chen, Greg Kinnear. Mm. Greg Kinnear? Finola Flanagan. Oh, love Finola Flanagan. I, I think she's a good actress. She's a very good actress. Yes. She was amazing in uh, Four Brothers. Mm. She was. Oh, God. She That's was a good the mom. That's a good film. She's good and lost in the yeah. big role she had in that show. 
She was um, the polar bear. Let's see. Also, we have Kidnapped, colon, The Abduction of Edgardo Mortara. Uh, a Jewish boy is kidnapped and converted to Catholicism in 1858. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> We're kidnapping. You're becoming let's Catholic. Let's get the kids back to the theater. <laughs> uh, uh, is that a true story? <laughs> uh, it doesn't... <laughs> If it's not a true story, it sounds the worst script I've ever read. Uh, so this is the story of Edgardo Mortara, a young Jewish boy living in Bologna, Italy, who in 1858, after being secretly baptized, <laughs> was forcibly taken from his family to be raised as a Christian. His is it pa- true? No. His, oh, I guess. I mean, it doesn't say. Film. His parents struggled to free their son, became part of a larger political battle that pitted the papacy against forces of democracy and Italian unification. How is this not yeah. a true story? I'm assuming this has got to be based off of a true story. So let me let me go to the to the. It sounds horrible. Uh, let me go to the. Uh, Do uh, did you know secret me... baptisms really count? Yes. <laughs> I mean, because if 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 you're not going to be open about it, then 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 how does it? Uh, okay, so it is uh, based on Danielle Scalise's book, uh, El Caso Mortara, albeit oh. loosely. The book itself is based on a true story, the Mortara case. There was once a kid named <laughs> where a six-year-old Jewish boy was kidnapped by the Catholic Church in 1858 in Bologna. The Catholic Church did something wrong. I, it, it's hard <laughs> to believe, but. Die, Bart, die. V Bart, V. I, I, no one who's we, we can't seem to we we, st- we can't just can't seem to get away from Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, he keeps kidnapping you. To be fair, intern fax machine did not put this on the outline. You <laughs> found it yourself. <laughs> I mean, um, and then lastly, this when week, you least expect it. I mean, they're like the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> uh, found Jesus. He was under the talk coffee table. Hello. <laughs> well, it's got. Uh, lastly. Um, a 2022 film that is now seeing uh, it's actually a 2022 documentary that's being released called Queen of the Deuce it's the <laughs> it's the unbelievable story of Shelley Wilson who escaped the Holocaust oh, and, damn it there goes my joke <laughs> and built a porn cinema empire what? A porn cinema empire in New York City in the 1970s. That was a big twist. I was not expecting. You know what? We could do a thousand plot lines and never we come, up, never with that come one. up with that. She was a Greek born Christmas celebrating Jewish grandmother who married men but was openly gay. This documentary charts her <laughs> unlikely. This documentary charts her unlikely rise to wealth as a shrewd businesswoman on The Deuce, a.k.a. Uh, New York's infamous 42nd Street. Time out. Ah, oh, that's The Deuce. And she was into okay. shitting films. Uh, <laughs> so so they, I, I, if Chat. I'm not mistaken, HBO made a like a show about her in this. Oh, okay. It was called The Deuce. Oh, um, that one. Okay. I, I'm pretty sure that that was loosely based off of her, but this is the actual biography. If, do you think it's a real documentary or somebody wrote this script and they're like, and all the uh, studios are like, this doesn't even sound like it would be true. I mean, and then they're like, let's make, I mean, it's a documentary. <laughs> I, maybe, maybe not. That was a lot of twist in that. Yeah, that was good, Brian. A lot, lot of stuff there. Yeah. Uh, so I'll be looking for that documentary. Okay. Uh, Brian or Jeff, can you give me some top five music? All right, we're done. From Randall, top five. He picked this one, too. He's been rocking it. Randall Holt. He's not evil. He's, he's just, just my brother. Way. There you go. Top five favorite fictional uncles and or aunts. We may have done this one before, but it's been a long time. And since the listener sends in a top five, we got to do it. I don't remember doing this one. I don't either, did. actually. I'm just waiting for Doug to say, you did this in episode 12. Uh uh, which is, we appreciate that, actually. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Brian, go ahead with your top five. Uh, let's five? see here. My number five, I'm going to go with Uncle Rico <laughs> from Napoleon Dynamite. That's a good one. Okay. I'll take him off my list. No, no. Put him on the board. What number was he for you? <laughs> he wasn't on a number yet. Oh, okay. Put him on the board. Of the ones I wrote down, I haven't numbered them yet. What's your number five? 
Uh, my number five is Uncle Rico. <laughs> just to piss you off, okay? Uncle Fester. Now on my list. I know he's not on your list, but no. I know you don't like the Adams family no. for some strange reason. But uh, yeah, okay. Uncle Fester, the, the preferably not the Christopher Lloyd version. But he was. We did interview Christopher Lloyd. We we did. Uh, my number five was Aunt B from Andy Griffith Show. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I nobody say, saw that coming. Yeah. There you go. Love I Andy Griffith Show. I will say I had show. a hard time finding fictional ants that would make my list. I know I did too. But I pe- people like are really being uh, pretty. Yeah, they're not good. No, they don't make good ant characters. Uh, Aunt B. That's it. Yeah, when Aunt B is your top Aunt ant B? character. And I. And, yeah, and honestly, you know, Aunt B is not a great person in that show. No. Oh. But to be fair, Andy Griffith does, Andy doesn't do a really nice job to her either. Oh, no. It's kind of like it's a bad show. No. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, my number four is, I hobied it, Uncle Rad and Aunt Frisky. It is uh, from Bluey. And uh, love Bluey. And, really? Uh, I don't think you've ever met. Oh, that. I love Bluey. And uh, so, yeah, they are my number four. Uh, uncle Rad's kind of the brother, that co- the uncle that comes back. Uh, he's only in five episodes. But uh, he kind of explores the world, comes back, and then he... Is he rad? Uh, he is. Does he talk with, like, that surfer? He does, type? actually. <laughs> and then Aunt Frisky is uh, really cool, too. I like her a lot, so... Um, but yeah, they, is she a whore? <laughs> no, <laughs> but they start dating and then they end up getting married. So, uh, number four for you. <laughs> That's when the whores come to town. <laughs> uh, number four for me, I- I'm going to go with uh, Bilbo Baggins. Is he an uncle? He's Frodo's uncle. Okay, great. Great. Uncle Bilbo. Great. Played by Sean Astin. Uh, no. Oh. He-, he was Samwise. Oh, okay. Mm. Number four for you, Brian? Was that um, on your list? No. Oh, okay. uh, no, it was on an honorable mention list gotcha. that I left at gotcha. home. <laughs> um, let's see here. My number five, that, that nope, we just did that one. Yeah, but, number four. Um, number four, I'm going to go with uh, Drunk Uncle Ned from Family Ties. <laughs> oh, I forgot about Uncle Ned. Good one. That's a good pull. I good like that pull. one. Yeah, uh, Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, number three. Uh, number three, I'm going to go with Uncle Leo from Seinfeld. That's my number three. Put it on the board. Nice job. Hello, Jerry. <laughs> your, co- your, your cousin Jeffrey works for the parks. <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> he should write your material, Jerry. <laughs> uh, uh, that's a good one. Number three. For you, Number three for me, I've got uh, Uncle Jesse Duke. <laughs> That's a good uh-huh, one. Uh-huh. I didn't even think of that. Yep. Uh, from the TV show or the movie? From the TV show. Willie Nelson was good, though. Well, Willie Nelson wasn't a bad uh, version. Yeah. But Denver Pyle is the number one. Okay. True. Uncle Jesse. Uh, my number three was Uncle Leo uh, from Seinfeld. Uh, number two is Scar from The Lion King. <laughs> um, he was an uncle. Oh, uh, yeah. He's on my list. Um, oh, number two? I guess I'm putting him at number two. Put it on the board! <laughs> Scar and Uncle Rico are tied at number two. <laughs> hey. No king, no king. La, 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 la. Foles. Scar had the best song in the movie, and then they didn't even include that song when they did the live action, quote, unquote, they, like, version. It was like a speech that wasn't a speech. It was awful. Um, and... So they're making a second one that's Mufasa as a kid, because that's great. And Scar is in it. I would hope so if he's But like they start adding some other like from characters from the first the the, you know, the Lion King. And they're and the people online are like, did they just wipe his brain clean like (laughs) from uh, Star Wars? Like you don't remember these guys? (laughs) Uh, so, yeah, Scar's number two. Uh, that was your number two along with... Scar and Uncle Rico are okay. tied at number two. Uh, number two for you? Uh, number two for me, I hobied this one, uh-huh. uh, Uncle Phil and Aunt Viv, Fresh Prince. Honorable mentions for me. Good one. Good uh, one. Both Aunt Vivs, by the way. Both I, Aunt I, Aunt I, I, like, I like both of them equally. I, I do, too. I didn't think that they were um, 
you know, whatever. It's another thing that the social media and do the online did. Do feel like they're the same character, or does it feel like there was a change in character when they changed actresses? I think that there was a, a small difference in that character mm-hmm. with, with each of them. I agree. Uh, then number one for me, mm-hmm. uh, Aunt Jackie from Roseanne. Oh, I think ah. that's a good one. Brian, your list was pretty good. I like that. Um, Jeff, number one. Uh, Everybody heard that, right? Yeah. Jason just gave me a compliment. I, I did. <laughs> I We're recording, right? Yes. Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't worry. He'll just hit format. You'll be fine. <laughs> Let me make sure we still are recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's counting up. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, number one for me is uh, Uncle Elmer. Oh, the wrestler? Hillbilly Jim's uncle. <laughs> the least skilled guy I've ever seen. One of the least skilled guys. He's great. Uncle Elmer and uh, wasn't there a cousin too? Cousin Junior. Junior. That's I think there were two cousins. Like cousin, cousin Junior Luke. was like 800 pounds and he was awful. He was a giant Gonzalez of his time. Oh, did, didn't like Uncle uh, Elmer hold the record for quickest match ever at some point. I don't know. Didn't he have like the donkey kick and like <laughs> it was like the first move done in the match and he knocked the guy out. Man. <laughs> I know for a while King Kong Bundy had it for WrestleMania when he beats ST Jones. It, it, yeah. If, uh, if it wasn't Uncle Elmer, it was Cousin Junior. It was one of them. One of those two. <laughs> you know, speaking of shortest wasn't there uh, a wedding too? Wrestling there was. events. Yeah. Um, also this week, uh, at the TNA show, yeah. uh, Santino was there. Oh yeah. He's I, awesome. I, know, I didn't know that he was with TNA and yep. like his music hit. And I like, I was like, oh my God, like he's the general he, manager. Yeah, he like came out. Oh my God. Uh, so funny. You ever go online, uh, like with Twitter, they have, uh, if wrestling is fake, explain this. And it's Santino versus cactus or uh, mankind Sako, like the snake versus the sun, <laughs> and they're fighting. He's just hilarious. Santino was probably one of the funnier things. Oh God. Yes. It was, it was bad, but it was also entertaining. It was entertaining. You know that somebody pitched that to him. Yep. And he hated it. Yes. But he still did it. Yes. And did to get it a paycheck. Well. Yep. So I, I give him credit for that. Uh, number one for me was Uncle Buck from John Candy, the movie. I love that film. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we did have uh, listeners uh, sent this in. Randall, since right. it was his top five. Yep. He had Aunt B. Aunt B. Aunt Aunt Come eat your key lamb pie. Uh, Uncle Jesse from Duke's. Aunt Abby and Aunt Martha from Arsenic and Old Lace. The okay. movie. Jeez, old. Mm. It's a deep dive. Aunt May, the Marissa Tomei version. I thought of that. I did, too. Uncle Scrooge from DuckTales. Might solve a mystery. Or rewrite history. Woo-hoo. DuckTales. Woo-hoo. Uh, honorable mention, Uncle Scrooge, the Michael Caine version. Uh, no. From Michael Caine. And just for uh, that was for just for Jason, he said. Thank you. All right, no Jacobo. More, no more top five lists for Randall for a while. <laughs> Jacobo at uh, tweets by Jacobo had Aunt Jemima. Oh, jeez. There we go. <laughs> Uncle Elroy from Next Friday. Oh yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Buck. Yeah. Uncle Fester and Uncle Ruckus. Oh okay. So. Uh, and then we had, uh, okay. we, we had some on Facebook too. Go right ahead. Uh, let's see. Sarah White posted a, uh, a gif of Uncle Buck. Yep. Gotta love it when he's making um, the pancakes. Let's see. From Nick Mayer. Mm-hmm. Uh, number five, Uncle Buck. Yep. Number four, Hobie, Ants, Hilda, and Zelda from oh, Sabrina the Teenage Winch. Forgot about one. that. Uh, number three, Aunt Meg from Twister. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, number two, Uncle Jesse from Full House. Oh, yep. Wrong Uncle Jesse. And number one, Uncle Jesse from Duke's <laughs> Hazard. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, Kevin Brigger says, I'll plead the fifth. I don't know if he's... Um, he doesn't have to pick his real life uncles. It's just... Yeah, it's fictional uncles. Fictional so, uncles. Uh, so if Uncle Bob uh, is what he's pleading the fifth on. And yeah. then uh, Cindy Lou Who <laughs> says, Uncle Jesse, Duke's Hazard. Yep. Uh, Uncle Jesse and Aunt Becky from Full House. Hey, Aunt Becky will do whatever it takes to get you into Sorry. college, even if it means that's jail true. Time. That's true. Uh, number three, Uncle Phil and Aunt Viv. Mm. Uh, number two, Aunt Zelda from Sabrina. 
And then number one, uh, she puts herself on that list, Aunt Cindy. Oh, well, congratulations, <laughs> Aunt um, Cindy. She, I guess. But she's fictional. I mean, I've met her nephew, so I know she's a real aunt. <laughs> Are you a real girl? Um, I'm a girl, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I had two honorable mentions. Go right ahead. Uh, one of them was also um, I can't. I just looked at it and I can't remember. Okay. Uh, the other one was uh, Aunt Sheila from King of Queens. Mm. She's Doug's aunt that uh, hooks up with uh, Carrie's dad, Arthur. Oh. She and her husband are separated. He come. She comes to town. Then hooks Arthur starts wooing her. Oh. He asks for permission to woo her. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a pretty good episode. Okay. So is she a better love interest for Arthur than uh, Spence's mom? Uh, I mean, for only it being one episode, yeah. But I, I think his best love interest was uh, Veronica St. James. I don't remember Veronica St. James. She was the one that... Uh, Played by Susan St. James. No, she was the like famous singer who the song was... Uh, you can't lick my lollipop. I do kind of remember him going on that. That was song. the name of her song. You can lick my lollipop, but you can't lick me. Moving on, um, titles for the show. Uh, or actually, I'm sorry, What's, bad idea of the yeah. week. Uh, bad idea of the week, uh, number 812. Uh, um, <laughs> being a cannibal. Uh, I, I was going to say that the, the Catholic school kidnapping, <laughs> yeah. and baptizing kids secret right three sixty four. Let's in, do that. in eighteen fifty eight. Bad idea number six six six. Oh, there uh, we go. Kidnapping a Jewish kid and making him in kidnappings and secret uh, Catholicism, secret but uh, baptisms. baptisms makes sense. Uh, let's see here. Um, All right, Jeff, give me a noun. Oh, uh, wait, wait, what mandolin is this? Um, Something else that I forgot. So in honor, uh, at the wrestling show, yeah, uh, talking with Ryan uh-huh. uh, about uh, Joe Hendry, mm-hmm. told me an interesting fact that I was unaware of, that yeah. um, on the Europe billboards chart mm-hmm. for months, mm-hmm. Joe Henry's song yep. was battling Taylor Swift mm-hmm. at the top of the billboards chart, yes. his song. Wow. I believe in yes. Joe Hendry. So in honor of that, we're uh-huh. going to do a Taylor Swift Mad Lib. That's fine. Noun, Jeff. Jeff, I need so a noun. Taylor Swift, her noun will be ring. Jason, give me an adjective. Colorful. Jeff, give me a type of event. WrestleMania. Hmm. Taylor Swift at WrestleMania. I can go for that. Jason, give me a plural type of food. Mm, hot dogs. Jeff, give me a part of the body. <laughs> uh, kneecap. No. Oh. Jason, give me a verb. Uh, fisting. God. Of course Jason has to go there. Jeff, give me an animal. A uh, panda. Uh, Jason, give me a verb. Um, <sighs> jogging. Or jog if it doesn't Yeah, matter. it's not. Yeah, G. sorry. Yeah, just so we'll uh, jog. Okay. Uh, Jeff, give me a type of event. Another type of event. Summer Uh I'm going <laughs> to say Comic Expo. Oh, October 18th through the 20th. Jason, give me an adjective. Uh, large. Jeff, give me an article of clothing. Ooh. Scarf. Jason, give me a plural animal. Um, necromonger. Curse. What? Okay, fine. That's not an animal. Just don't be weird with it. (laughs) Rabbit. Thank you. Jeff, give me a... a Necromonger. Jeff, give me an adjective. Uh, <laughs> floppy. Jason, give me a place. <sighs> Anchorage. Ooh, good one. I like that. I like Anchorage, Alaska. Jeff, give me a color. Uh, we will go with maize yellow. Jason, give me a verb. 
Um, clogging. Or clog if it doesn't yes. end in ing. Yeah. I didn't say a verb ending in ing. Clog. All right, Jeff, wrap this up with a plural noun. Um, thoughts and prayers. It works. <laughs> Whoa. All right, so this is a uh, Taylor Swift Mad Lib, uh, things you should never tolerate. Okay. Number one, people who talk over ring ball game. Okay. Didn't work. People who think they're more colorful than anyone else. Oh, that, that, works. Yeah, that, works, that works. That works. That works. Tolerate that. Uh, people who ruin your WrestleMania. You're bull- <laughs> done. Yes. I hate them. Uh, people. <laughs> <laughs> people who tell you that you smell like hot dogs. <laughs> I will not tolerate anyone <laughs> telling me that I smell like hot dogs. Uh, <laughs> people who break your kneecap. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Don't tolerate that. No. Hate when they do that. Yeah. Don't be friends with those people. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, I mean, like Tanya Harding had to distance herself that's from true. those type of people. Uh, do not tolerate people who fist like a panda. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Clip your nails. <laughs> uh, never tolerate people who don't let you jog at a comic expo. Oh God! Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, never tolerate people who steal your large scarf. Yeah, unless you're MJF. Yep. Uh, never tolerate people who don't like rabbits. Mm. I love rabbits, so. Eh. Austin Pfeffer. Mm. Uh, never tolerate people who make you feel bad for being floppy. Oh, <laughs> it happens. It happens. It happens to everyone. That's what they all say. <laughs> uh, things you should never tolerate. People who ditch you at Anchorage. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the cold. That's a rough day. I uh, hate when they ditch me in Anchorage. <laughs> uh, never tolerate people who hate the color maize yellow. That's true. That is true. Uh, never tolerate, uh, lastly, never tolerate people who clog your thoughts on the playground. That just kind of works. Negative thoughts. Yeah. Quit clogging my thoughts. Yeah. Title for the show. Uh, good job, Brian. Uh, titles for the show. I have quit clogging my thoughts. I have, I missed the colon. Uh, the Ascension, and uh, Drunk Grilling. Brian? Uh, I had, finally, we're done with Jesus. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, that would not go over well, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> then I had... Uh, leaning towards it. <laughs> uh, then I had Satan's anus. Nope. <laughs> um... And I had, uh, we can't seem to get away from Jesus. <laughs> I said the theme. <laughs> I mean, we. I thought we were, but then by the end of it, we just, we couldn't. <laughs> uh, th- those are the three types. That I had. <laughs> two Jesus and a Satan. <laughs> I mean, two <laughs> Jesus and a Satan. <laughs> oh, my God. Done. Diamond say it, Jeff. That's the title. I don't even get to read my Go options. ahead, read them. <laughs> I, mean, I just had that does not excite me. I could eat myself from this point on. Oh, from this point on. I missed the colon. This will get the kids back into the cinema. <laughs> uh, secret baptism. I do like secret baptism. And Brian smells like hot dogs. <laughs> I will not tolerate that. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> uh, yeah. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We appreciate it. And uh, um, we'll be back next week. Um, Roger said, um, yeah. Real quick. Yeah. Um, I very much needed to laugh today. Um, so thank you. Hey. Uh, yeah. I did not have as serious of a thing with you as you did, but uh, I did the same thing. Like, I was driving home, and I was my brain was fried, and I was happy to. Very, very much needed to laugh today. Good. So thank you. Uh, do you think two Jesus and a Satan will help you? <laughs> Uh, I mean, can't hurt. I mean, two is better than one. <laughs> I mean, I've always said that. Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. From walking dead to talking heads, from comic books to TV sets, there's a history. Not so bad. There's the history. It's the history of bad. So bad. The history of bad. It's bad. History of bad ideas. Podcast. 
पिन वेस्टर्न एंड हॉबी